Yo ho. <laughs> so we're on the about to leave Istanbul to go to Mali. Yeah, it's little that's brother. You. That's you. Yeah. <laughs> Dave's, got his, Dave's got his granola. But he's been smelling a lot. Yes. He's been fasting. It smells super good. It smells like granola. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's the deck we know. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Welcome to Monday News number 24. So we're currently in Malé, the capital city of the Maldives. And this doesn't really look like how you imagine the Maldives, I guess. Um, it's like this big one island with a lot of concrete buildings, scooters, sorry. Um, yeah, and actually around 400,000 people live on this island, which is quite a lot. And what is actually interesting about living on an island is that you're isolated from the rest of the world. So you kind of need to be quite thoughtful about the resources you have because everything needs to be imported and exported. And this gives a few interesting things. Well, let me show you. So here they have old uh, jerry cans where they grow their plants. So you don't always need to recycle the plastic. Sometimes you can just reuse it by cutting a few things. Even old water bottles. An old desk chair transformed into a swing. And to hold the paint, you don't buy a new paint container, you just use an old water bottle. Now, recycling and reusing stuff is good to minimize the resources you use, but what's even better is to make sure you don't need it in the first place. How much? Three. Well, no plastic, it's okay. No, I'll take it. No plastic. Huh? No plastic. No, <laughs> no plastic. And shops sell bolts and nuts in bulk, reducing the amount of packaging. But not everything is done very resourceful here. We're going to go. Uh, where are we going today, guys? Telefushi. We what, are going Telefushi. Where's Jerry? One big pile of rubbish. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's negative, man. <laughs> it's a pile of resources. One big pile of precious material. Exactly. Get your filthy words out of here, Jerry. Yeah, this one big island is a bit messy. Here all the waste from the city is dumped and burned. And many of it could be recycled, but not in this way. I actually made a video about this a few years ago. Watch the link below if you want to see. And they also have all this plastic flowing in from the ocean. And people started consuming a lot of packaging, like in any other capitalistic system out there in the world. And that's the main reason why we're here, to see if we can do something about it or use our knowledge about recycling to help people and educate them to you know, reduce the amount of plastic waste they make. So uh, together with Parley for the Oceans, we did a collaboration and shipped our recycling workspace container here. And we're now showing people how to do it together with Jerry and Charlotte. Hey! Hey, so hey. here's a snack. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's, good. it's coconut sugar. So in the coming days we're gonna work here in this container to educate people how to recycle plastic. And uh, they need your help guys. Everybody okay? <laughs> yeah, there's still some work to do. We'll make a proper detailed video about this whole pilot project later on. And so stay tuned for that one. Right, so now back to uh, the cold, windy, freezing, wet workspace in the Netherlands, where Paul is going to show you a futuristic project we're doing to see, you know, what would the future of plastic look like and um, how can we make it more sustainable. It's very experimental, but it's just the first tiny step towards it. Hey guys, it's Paul. So at Precious Plastic, our main focus is plastic recycling, but we're also interested in the alternative materials that could be used in the future to replace plastic altogether. So Giannis and Marina have been spending a lot of time researching different materials and methods to see what kind of applications they could potentially have. Um, could you guys tell us a bit about what you've been working on and why you're interested in it? So we spent the last few months 
with some basic material research into biodegradable materials mm -hmm. because um, our main focus is to get solutions for places where we use single-use plastics. Mm -hmm. So like festivals, to-go containers, certain events. Um, because we kind of came to the conclusion that um, we really we can try to change people's behavior about plastics and to collect it better and recycle, but I don't know, maybe we lost a little hope. So we think it's better to give them biodegradable materials. So if they throw them away or at the beach, put them like in the sand, that they at least won't harm the environment. Sure. You guys show us a little bit of what you've been working with, how the results are with uh, the different materials you're using? Sure. sure. So those two first materials that we decided to focus on are potato peels. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. <laughs> so we <laughs> thought that it would be a good starting point to choose something accessible and pretty cheap and uh, sort of a waste stream because both potato peels and uh, so potato peels is basically a waste stream from potato potato industry uh -huh. and wheat bran is a byproduct from. Um, from the flower from the industry. Flower industry. And what have you been making with this stuff? So here we were trying out different processes. So one good thing about potatoes is that uh, there is enough starch in potato skins that could make a uh, material pretty hard. Mm -hmm. So this board was made like with a pretty low tech process, just pressing um, and heating it. Cool. So it's pretty hard mm -hmm. and it doesn't really have anything except um, potato peels, some water, and I think some extra starch in this one. Nice. Yeah. Um, so uh, this was an experiment to make the material more flexible and sort of leather looking. Uh -huh. To provide some alternative to the leather, but it's still under development. Uh huh. Uh, okay, so the next one here, I tried out sort of different uh, process. This was made with uh, an extrusion machine from precious plastic. Uh huh. Um, yeah, so here is how it looks when it just comes out from the machine. And this was made with the same process with the extrusion machine, uh -huh. but using the mold from coal. So you hooked the extrusion machine up and injected the potato skin into this. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so here we also tried some other process for potato peels, mm -hmm. which is a bowl uh, made with a heat press. Mm -hmm. um, and have you tested out using them in, in normal applications? Yeah, so we tried out the wheat bran mm -hmm. a lot because the wheat bran is actually, we are making it to be edible. And can you show us how you're making these? Yeah, sure. We came up with the mold that we can heat ourselves. So we built this little thing with a PID controller like in all the other machines mm -hmm. and put two hot plates from a normal kitchen stove. Uh, we put them under the mold on each side, one. Uh -huh. So now we can heat it up to around about 140 degrees. Cool. And then once it's heated up, which takes like 45 minutes, you can just, we can just keep pressing it. Um, and every bowl takes um, about two minutes. And moving forward um, beyond just this part of the project, what else are you guys hoping to accomplish here? I think it would be very interesting to open this up once mm -hmm. again and go more into more different materials. Mm -hmm. um, so from next month on, I will be working on that. I will be trying new materials with other waste streams like tea leaves and coffee grounds and um, maybe bread, if anyone knows about bioplastics from bread, um, I would be super interested because it's a big waste stream. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully at the end of version four, we will have a bunch of different materials with one like prototype product. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing this with us, guys. Super yeah. exciting. Uh, can't Thank wait you. to see what happens in the future, what other types of stuff you make. Yeah, me too. Cool. <laughs> Hello people, uh, this is Mattia, and uh, meanwhile Dave and the others are in the Maldives enjoying some sun and of course carrying out the whole uh, Maldives uh, pilot. I'm left here in Eindhoven making sure that the whole crew runs smoothly and nicely and happily. I would like today to focus on 
uh, the whole community organization management that we've been going through and learning in the last few months where you know we managed to get 40 people you know in a confined space uh, working together living together and there's a lot of learning going into that and today I'm going to be showing you what we learned so far and what we are doing to to make it better and improve it so from last September about uh, over 40 people actually came down to to help us out in here and you know me and Dave are not really used to work in, with such a big group I normally would design website on my yellow van and Dave would be filming some videos here and there, mostly on his own or with his girlfriend or a friend. And, and last year for version 3, we, we had 10, 12 people uh, helping us out for six or seven months. Um, but the jump from 10 people to over 40 people is huge. And me and Dave basically lacked the necessary experience uh, in order to plan ahead and make sure we were ready for, for this big change. So, and that's what we've really been learning over the last uh, couple of months. So over the month of December, me and Dave have been working day in, day out to, to really uh, make sure to design a system and a plan in which people could work as efficiently as they could. And, and we designed this little tool to help us uh, achieve this, these goals. And I'm going to show you now how it works. So here is our roadmap. And on the left here, you can see all the macro tasks that we have ahead. So you have from machine development to business testing, product design, precious plastic website, and so on and so forth. Whereas on the top you have, of course, all the month of the year. And this gives a very tangible understanding of how much time you're going to be spending on, on a certain project and when that is going to happen. Making sure that the whole team is aligned and have an understanding of you know, where the project is going and when. And on the other side, instead, we have the task board or the goal boards. So this is our uh, goal board and the way that this works is basically divided into you know spaces in the workspace. So you have the workspace, you have the office, you have the cherries which are people that are doing you know all the small little tasks around the, around the project. And the way that this works is basically divided in the big macro tasks that we out outlined it earlier. And these include the shredder, the washing, beyond plastic, extruder and so on. And be beneath there, that's uh, the people that are going to be working on that. And now going on the vertical axis, you have long-term goals, which is uh, what you want to achieve in your time here. This being three months, six months, however you're here. And then we break this down into more achievable concrete goals on a monthly basis. So what are you going to achieve in the next 30 days? And finally, we have the, the weekly uh, uh, tasks, which are much more practical, achievable, tasks that you want to do in the next four or five days in order to make sure that you can then uh, achieve your monthly goal and your long-term goals uh, for version four. So we've been working with these uh, tools for only a couple of weeks, so it's very early to say, but people are back here now in 2019, super excited to you know, achieve their goals, to work towards you know, a very successful version four of Precious Plastic. So that's all for me for today. Back to you, Dave, in the Maladies. Um, make sure to take in as much sun as you can because here is well cold. Ciao. Hey, uh, it's Charlotte, not Dave Mattia. Um, and I am currently in the Maldives. Uh, I've been helping Dave and Jerry set up the precious plastic recycling container. And I'm going to be bringing you the community news from all around the world on this beautiful island. Um, to start off with, uh, I'm going to talk about BOPE. Uh, which is a workspace located in Thailand and you might know them from their really lovely uh, colourful coasters which are injected into um, but BOPE is now making like larger objects so they're making these kind of nice uh, hexagonal trays and these circular trays and what's also nice is he's actually built a whole new bigger machine to make these bigger products so really developing the original uh, precious plastic blueprints which is nice. Uh, more machine development is uh, Singular Mars in the UK and they've just built a shredder that actually runs on no electricity and uh, it runs purely on uh, human power and it has a hand crank on the side and you turn the hand crank and the shredder starts to shred the plastic. Uh, I really like this alternative uh, energy approach. Uh, I'm not sure how much you guys could have shred but good luck. And Remade Crafts, they're back to making these really nice uh, recycled plastic pens from I think HDPE and basically what Sam does, the guy behind Remade Crafts, he gets the, sh the different colour shredded plastics, puts them into this mould, makes like a big block in the oven, cuts it into smaller sections, and then these, these little sections, he then turns them onto the lathe to make these really nice uh, organic forms. 
But what I really like about this process is that instead of uh, the shavings from the pen just going into the bin, uh, he actually is now putting the shavings back into the shredder and then using those shavings to make new pens. So a complete uh, zero waste process, which is really nice. And uh, this is my favourite from this month. Uh, this is a workspace located all the way out in India and they are making uh, plastic beams from HDPE. And so they're actually using these multicoloured beams to turn them into pieces of furniture, such as tabletops and this new stool. And they're going to be uh, put into a restaurant in India, which is really nice. And lastly, uh, as we are in this beautiful place, um, Precious Plastic Maldives is here on this island as well. Uh, Dave and Jerry are currently there and they are helping to give some advice and tips into the machines. We've got a shredder, oven and injection machine here and an extruder actually. Um, so we're going to go over and take a look and see what they're doing. Goodbye! Okay, so we are here in the Precious Plastic Moldy's workspace. Is everyone working? We've got the extruder, the oven, shredding some PET, and the shredder which has just been taken apart by Dave. And Jerry. <laughs> and Jerry. <Hi> guys. <laughs> And uh, this is Gordon, who he runs Hello. the workspace. Hi. <laughs> do you want to talk to us about this, this mould that you've got, Gordon? Yeah, so we made this uh, aluminium mould for, for plastic eggs. Uh, and one of the things we tried to do here was to uh, allow us to hold it closed without um, nuts and bolts. So uh, just with this simple uh, clamp fitting there. Nice. Um, that holds it tight. Also, uh, rather than having to screw into the bottom of the extruder or the, the injection moulder, um, this one just uh, fits over a, a small fitting in the bottom. Cool. Yeah. Do you want to show us how it's put on? Yeah, sure. Fits on like that. Nice. And, and then clamp it on. on there, yeah. Nice. So you'd have had one on each side. Cool. And these are the eggs that you made? Yeah. And what was this made from? So um, at the resort we, uh, we have a big Easter egg hunt uh, every year. Um, and uh, we hide uh, plastic and wooden eggs in the jungle. Nice. <laughs> uh, so the kids can find those and exchange them for, for chocolate ones. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Good. Say goodbye from Sweaty Maldives. <laughs> and that is all for this uh, month of news. Um, thank you for watching. Thanks to our Patreon supporters. And we'll be back next month. Uh, back in Ayurveda. Thank you very much.